Good morning, my lovely people. Before we get started, I want to take a moment of silence for all our veterans around the world for serving our countries. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your time. And thank you to your families that have suffered right along with you. Because without our soldiers, what would we have? My daddy served, so I understand. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, welcome to another Myth Monday. So, today we are going to be talking about a Louisiana legend. And my mama has had an experience with this legend. So did my daddy, but my oh, poor daddy's not here to tell me. So, all right. today's myth and legend is Fefele. Another word, otherwise known as the Cajun Fairy. <laughs> now, it's been, there's several names for it, but in French it is Fifile. And, uh, it's an interesting one. As I did my research, I was looking through different myths from Louisiana, and some of them I knew. And I was like, okay, I could do that, like the Rougarou and stuff like that. But then I came across the Fifile, and I went to my mom. I was like, Mama, have you heard of this legend? And at first she was like, mm, what is it? And I started to tell her. She's like, yeah, oh yeah, I know what that is. So we're going to get into that right now. <laughs> now, Fifile translates into English as the marsh fire because they are literally balls of light so yeah um some people think that they are the incarnations of natural occurrences of will-o'-the-wisp which will-o'-the-wisp is a irish and scottish legend which is basically the same thing as a fifth lay so, and it can appear now it can appear as a ball of fire that's you know, straight, straight up. It looks like a something like a little ball that's on fire floating in the air. Uh, and they're mostly seen in like marshy areas like swamps and stuff. But they have been seen in cemeteries and other places. So, but depending on who you talk to, they could be one of three things. And one is a fairy, spirits, and ghosts of loved ones. Um, now there's also counter version of this, that they're more known as devilish beings. Um, so in these versions, they are known to be a demon or bad spirit that takes the form of light. So, um, they are, the legend is, is that they can confuse people enough to make these people get themselves lost um and the people that have fallen victim to the fifile uh is to believe that sorry i can't read my own handwriting are believed to have seen a camp or a house and that makes them want to go to it which ends up causing them to get more lost um now, that there's two possibilities of this that could happen. That they become more lost, or they walk into any, a body of water and they end up drowning. So, 
you know, they're, they can all, they're also known as ghost lights. And they are reportedly seen in a lot of South Louisiana tent cemeteries. And it's also seen in, like, say, the middle of Louisiana. Now, North Louisiana, you don't hear nothing about the Fifile. Because I tried talking to my uncle. I tried talking to my aunt. They had never heard of it. That was a legend they'd never heard of. Which is odd. But they are in North Louisiana. Well, more towards the middle, but north of the middle of Louisiana. So, yeah. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. now there's a cemetery in Lake Charles, which is very well known for the high frequency of the Fefile. And it's Bilbo Cemetery, which is a very old, old, old cemetery. I mean, and the experience is they have a record that goes far, as far back as the 1840s of people seeing the Fefile. So, um, <laughs> now, you know, Louisiana is basically these, I say Louisiana should have been its own country because they are so different from the rest of us, like way different from the rest of us. <laughs> but the further south you go, like, people's beliefs of the Fifile change. So, um... They believe in different things with the Fifile. Like, seriously, big difference. Like, North Louisiana, most people have not heard of it. Middle Louisiana, they believe it's these just playful things that can cause you to get lost. And in the South, they're way more devilish. So, like, um, there's two things that... I came across that they can they believe that they could be in the south further south of Louisiana. One is souls that have escaped from purgatory and babies who were never blessed in church, which is basically unbaptized babies. And believe it or not, even though these things are seen mostly around swamps, they cannot cross water. Especially running water. Um, which there's a lot of things with running water. Like with the paranormal and legends and stuff. So. Um, they. <laughs> one thing is. Is they. Some of these old, old Cajuns will tell you. If you're ever in a boat. Out in the swamp at night. And you see these little lights. Little balls of fire. Following you along the shore. They recommend not getting out of the boat. Stay in the boat until sunrise. And then, once sunrise comes along, then get out of your boat and go home. <laughs> or try to be as careful as possible. But, legend says that if you want to stop them in their tracks, to keep them from trying to come and get you, the only things that can really stop them is cold iron. And what I mean by cold iron is like, Knives, like pocket knives and stuff, steak knives, uh, needles, anything that is iron. That has iron in it. Um, so, they say that you can take whatever you got that's cold iron, you thrust it in the ground. And they just, they can't go past it. I, I don't know why, that I could not figure out. But during my research, I came across an article that interviewed this elderly Cajun lady who had had an experience with the Fefile. And she said that she does not trust knives. Why, I don't know. But she prefers to use needles, like sewing needles. And she said that uh, because the Fefile couldn't, they can't resist trying to fit through the little eye hole on the needle. So, I don't know what the deal is. It's like they've got another one where, which uh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But, to this day, you can go just about anywhere in South Louisiana and you will hear somebody say that they've survived. 
the fifth lay or they know somebody that survived the fifth lay or someone that they lost somebody to the fifth lay. You know, it's just, it's still alive and well till this day. So, there's got to be some truth to it. So, um, now some also say that the faithful lay will visit nurseries and come and steal the baby's breath. And they say if your baby wakes up and its cheeks are rosy, the faithful lay has been there and has taken some of their sweet breath. But... You, they say, to prevent that, you can take mustard seeds and throw it all over the floor. And the faithful lay will be too distracted to bother with the baby because they're going to want to count it. And if they get, you know, confused, which, <laughs> odd for something that's supposed to make you get confused. But if they get confused, they start over, which means keeps them distracted. So that way they can't steal the baby's breath. Now, and then there's also some, there's a lot, a lot of different legends behind the fifth filet. Some also think that they guard treasure. There was a story down towards uh, Pontchartrain, which, don't ask me where it's at, I've only been there once in my life, but it's towards South Louisiana. <laughs> But there was these two guys that worked on the railroad, and they seen a light, and they knew exactly what it was. And they went to follow it because they're like, hey, they guard treasure. Let's go find the treasure. <clears throat> and they followed it and followed it and followed it. And then they seen at one spot where it just dipped down into the ground and disappeared. So they decided, okay, well, that's what we're going to do because that's where the treasure probably is. Now, in the process of this, they were they started digging and everything. This is around Marsh area. So Marsh area land, if you've never been to like Florida, Louisiana, it is very wet. Yes, of course, but it, the ground, you can sink into the ground if it's mushy enough. So, but they started digging and they hit something hard and they got excited. Well, the other guy was like, wait a minute, I don't want to share this. So he hit his friend with his shovel and as he started to do that, now after he did that, he was trying to get the treasure chest out. And as he did, he was, had to position himself with his feet down and pull. And because of this, him and the treasure started sinking further and further down. And when his friend come to, he seen his other friend who just hit him in the head over this treasure that he wanted because he was greedy being sunk into the ground. And he was going to help him, but then he was like, wait, wait, he tried to kill me. He hit me in the head. I'm not going to help him. They say till this day, which supposedly this is supposed to be true about, you know, a real story. Um, they say till this day that he tells this story all the time. And the other railroad workers didn't, you know, they just laughed in his face thinking it was a made up story. <laughs> but railroad workers will, if they see these lights, they will go into their tents or in their little huddles or whatever to avoid them as much as possible. They say, do not stare at them too long, because then you're going to want to follow them. Which is what leads you to getting lost and confused, literally. And like I said, a legend has it that a lot of people get so lost and confused, thinking they're going to a camp or a home, because they can see it in the distance. They walk into a body of water and drown. <coughs> so, it's just, they can be playful, they can be evil, they can just... I guess it really depends because it could either be a baby, spirits of your loved ones. It could be what they say, like a demon or evil spirits. It just really varies from person to person. Um, now, as for experiences, when I was doing the research for this, I got to thinking 
because I was reading it and it was talking about these balls of light, balls of fire. And I was like, wait a minute. I've experienced something like that in Louisiana when I was a kid. Where we lived at was is called Spring Bayou, which is right between Marksville and Bruyette. <clears throat> and Bruyette's a community, Marksville's a town, which it's more like a city now. But anyway, when I was a kid, it was just a town. And it's out in the middle of nowhere, and our backyard was literally a bayou. We had dock and everything, boat ramp, we'd see gators, we'd see snakes, and... <laughs> I remember one time I was sitting outside because, I mean, I, I was the only kid there. All my siblings were growing up or moved off. So I was sitting outside and I noticed these little balls of light just flickering and bouncing from, you know, all over the place, just floating along the shore. And I was curious, but not curious enough to get the inflatable bed and go across the bike <laughs> because... Growing up, I grew up with all the superstitions and the legends. Like, I'm very superstitious to this day. And that's because, like I said, my family's from Louisiana. So, it just, when I was doing my research, I was like, wait a minute. That's what I saw. I saw Fe Filet. Which is odd. But, now, the experience my mom and my dad has had 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 this was a long time ago because my mom said my dad was with her when they seen it and she was like they I don't know what they were doing but there was a fence around where they were at and she said they seen this ball of light and it would bounce from post to post and back and forth from post to post and then it just disappeared it's just odd, ain't it? I mean, usually you you think balls of light. You think paranormal, you know? But no, in Louisiana, it's more of a playful with a devilish side type of thing. Where it can be playful and you can watch it and it'd be fine. Or if it chooses you, it could lead you to your death. <laughs> so it's just and I came across another story one woman wrote an article and she is from where did she say she was from I don't remember where she said she was from but she was from South Louisiana and she was telling me when she was what she said when she was a kid where they lived at she would sit by her window with her window open and just stare outside and she said she had seen a ball, a light, the fifth filet. And, and she was looking at it, and she wanted to go check it out, but she decided against it, and she went and told her mom. And she said her mom didn't, no, said she didn't believe her and told her, no, it's all right, whatever, just go to bed, go to bed. And she said, and no sooner she went in the room, she heard her mama Stabbed something into the porch, and when she went and looked, it was a steak knife. So, her mama believed, but didn't want to freak her daughter out. So, I mean, that's all I could basically find on the fifth filet as of right now. So, just if you go to Louisiana, and you see a little ball of light that looks like it's playful, do not follow it by any means and just check it out be curious but don't be that curious don't don't be stupid <laughs> so well guys i think that's basically it for today i mean there wasn't a whole whole lot behind the fair filet which y'all know me if there was i would try and keep it as short as sweet as possible and get to the point because i'm like a lot of people if the story is too long or anything i get bored so, I hope you guys have a wonderful Veterans Day. And again, to all our veterans around the world, thank you for your service. It's very well, very much appreciated and adored. So, you guys have a blessed day. Bye.